When it comes to movie sequels, the general rule of thumb is more. Make the threats bigger, the explosions splodier, and the empire striking back. Unfortunately, some creators tend to forget what makes their original characters so awesome in the first place, and for the sake of something new, end up mangling their beautiful creations. Oh no, I dropped it and now it's broken. I'm Plumpy from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 movie sequels that turn badasses into total wimps. Number 10, The Raptors, Jurassic Park 2 and 3. Raptors were the f best, armed with razor-sharp claws and the power of friendship, they could open doors and gizzards with reckless abandon. They're like wasps, killing for fun rather than necessity, you know, like wasps do. But then Jurassic Park 2 and Jurassic Park 3 happened and the killing machines were foiled by their two greatest foes, gymnastics and a 3D printer. The idea that Jeff Goldblum's daughter could pole dance raptors to death is almost, almost as bad as Sam Neill having a chat with them, just a little chat with a gothic ocarina. Utter silliness and totally not showing a little respect. Number 9, Anakin Skywalker, the prequels. It was a good idea to chart Darth Vader's progression from lightness to darkness, but the manner of Hayden Christian's performances and some of the story decisions meant his journey felt a little less like a Greek tragedy and more like a Greek yogurt, lightweight and disappointing. Poor dumb Anakin was actually screwed twice, not only being reinvented as a petulant multiple child murderer, but also a dude who talks about how annoying sand is before he cracks on with birds. Also the whole, no! Thing. Thank Christ for Rogue One, which managed the seemingly impossible task of making Darth Vader cool again. Number 8, John McClane, Die Hard 4 and 5. Remember when John McClane was just a dude down to his last bullet, nearly crippled and out of luck? Remember how the fact that he was a smart dude backed against the wall but still overcoming the odds is what made him cool? That was gradually stripped away from him over the course of the Die Hard sequels, but especially 4 and 5, which took everything about John McClane that made him relatable and then said, f*** it, I want him to go surfing on a jump jet. By the fifth and worst entry in the season, McClane was relegated to a supporting character in his own universe, still an implausibly invincible Superman, but one who follows his son around and whinges. Shameful. Number 7, Freddy Krueger, every single sequel. Freddy Krueger is a curious case of a character's popularity enduring despite pretty much every movie he appeared in doing its best to kick his mystique to death. The issue for Freddy after the actually scary nightmare on Elm Street was that he too often descended into comedy and slowly but surely the child killer, oh yeah that's right he's a child killer, lost his edge until finally he became little more than a walking punchline and the punchline was mostly the word bitch. Number 6, Predator, Alien vs Predator. In Alien vs Predator, which should have been excellent, the interstellar dreadlocked hunters, who had once been cunning tactical killing machines for their first two movies, were reimagined as hulking, idiotic space jocks, muscle bound and just looking for a kegger. Yep, they weren't the finished article, but the fundamental story approach of AVP was basically the American pie of the Predator film universe, with the stalkers looking to pop their cherries with some choice xenomorph tail. Up to this point, the Predators were resourceful, efficient weapons of mass destruction, but in AVP, they were completely blunted and the final incident Result comes when the last surviving predator teams up with a human, not even a warrior, a f explorer, to get his killing done. Number 5, Han Solo Return of the Jedi. Perhaps because Harrison Ford wasn't entirely committed for the Star Wars sequel, Han Solo is almost unrecognizable from the character who completely stole a New Hope and Empire from under the real stars. He was once a picture of swaggering bravado in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds, but now, thanks to his romantic entanglement with Leia, he was often reduced to a slightly annoyed man worrying about his girlfriend. Everything that had made him cool was gone, with Solo reduced to jealousy that Leia was going to run off with her brother. Number 4, Ripley, Alien Resurrection. Like Han Solo, Ripley should have been killed off before anyone had the opportunity to make her lame. Unlike Han Solo, they tried that, but then they brought her back. Sadly, Sigourney Weaver was convinced to come back to play a version of Ripley who was an utter portrayal of everything that had made her so popular initially. Perhaps because she was a clone, or more likely because Weaver was so disinterested in the film at this point, this version of the character is a hollow shell. Yes, she looks the same and kills a few aliens along the way, but instead of being a heroic leader of inevitably doomed survivors, she's a bystander who is utterly unsympathetic. The lack of fear might be intended as a reinforcement of her badass status, but frankly her terror and overcoming Coming said terror is part of what made Ripley such a damn badass in the first place. Number 3, Batman, Batman and Robin. I don't care what you say, Batman and Robin wasn't the sequel to Batman Forever, it was the sequel to the campus f silly as balls 1960s Batman movie only with less charm. For every other actor cast in the role, the duplicity of Bruce Wayne is as important as charisma or megastar looks, but Joel Schumacher seems so enamoured with the physicality of his new leading man George Clooney, he forgot to get any substance out of him and the character's entire ethos of an avenging monster born out of fear was neglected in favour of that lovely smile. Look, look at that lovely smile. This charlatan cape crusader bears no resemblance to the Dark Knight of the comics and there's just nothing left that makes him threatening or appealing. I hate him. I hate you, George. I hate you. 
Number two, Hicks and Newt, Alien 3. I mean, I guess you could argue that these guys were never given an opportunity to show their wimpiness because they were unceremoniously dumped on the KIA list before the film even started. In the grand history of character abuses, the decision to cull Ripley's adopted family ranks about as high as you can get, and though it goes some way to pushing Ripley back into her discomfort zone, it feels like such a betrayal of their characters. After all, Newt has spent an extraordinary amount of time surviving within an invaded colony, and Hicks was the roughneck to end all roughnecks. Both proved themselves unkillable despite ridiculous odds and for them to have been killed off so dismissively and easily that's just criminal and number one the t-800 and john connor terminator 3 from vicious no holds barred killing machine to comedy sunglasses wearing nincompoop in two easy steps the twist of having Arnie's killing machine reinvented as a bodyguard in the second film was a brilliant creative decision, because it not only completely messed with the audience and Sarah Connor's expectations, but it also turned him into a plucky underdog against a more advanced villain, which ironically made him seem even more of an awesome robo-dude. But then Terminator 3 went too far and completely removed everything that defined the T-800 success. He's neither a killbot nor a futuristic Kevin Costner, instead he's basically just a spirit guide leading the young John Connor away from harm to the extent that by the end it's utterly unbelievable this wet fish of a kid could ever rise up to be the leader of humanity. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here and What Culture on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.